undercover JDF agents promised jobs to some unsuspecting residents in the JLP Southside community, which is a part of the PMP's downtown Kingston constituency. Days before the massacre, JDF agents were required by government members to take all reasonable steps to ensure removal of anyone who was seen as a threat to the island security and to the smooth runnings of the PMP government. The agents arrived at 5.15 a.m. and drove 14 men from Southside to the Green Bay Artillery Range where the unsuspecting men were lured into an ambush by soldiers. The soldier opened a barrage of shots, but me just keep running till me climb down upon some rock near the sea. Me see a boat with two fishermen. Me signal and then pick me up and can me come a Greenwich farm, says Griffiths. Five of the men were killed and the others fled to nearby bushes. At least one entered the bay and was rescued by a passing fishing boat. The JDF's official report claims that the men were trespassers and they were shot dead by soldiers who surprised them while these men conducted target practice at the JDF firing range. The people of Southside demonstrated to protest against the killing. A jury at the official inquiry and coroner's inquest found that persons had conspired to kill the men at Green Bay and that people in the JDF were criminally responsible for the massacre. In July 1978, the Supreme Court issued warrants for 10 members of the JDF, but those charged for the conspiracy and those for the, acquit for the actual murders were all acquitted. The JLP's objections did not affect the acquittals. The Michael Manny-led PMP always denied knowledge of the covert action that was considered one of the worst acts of brutality in Jamaican history. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.